It's about independent thinkers. It's about freeing us from the patterns that have been put in our face our whole life. This is about showing us what's the truth logically and putting that pattern in our face. And the truth is we're number one. We run the world because culture is run by us and culture runs the world. So why should we give it to them and buy it back from them? I don't understand that. So that's what this network is about. And then also having authentic stories told by the people who are the, whose stories they are. So in, 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 in the television world, you got to go to a white production company, give them your story so they can sell it to a network and you just get a fee. You get no residual income. So in this respect, if you are a storyteller and I make your story, you're a partner with me. You're going to make residual income and the story will be told the way you want it told, not the way they want the, to- the story told where we're dysfunctional and, you know, they try to make legends look like they're clowns. You know, and in that same, what you say, how do you cut through with the story that you want to tell? Like, I tell how it. How do you stay away from the chatty, patty stuff, the coin, the term that you coined? Like, how do you stay away from that, do what you want to do, and still make that impact that you want to make? By doing what I want to do and staying away from it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, when you're the boss, I get to pick and choose who I want around me. If I don't like you, I fire you. That's that. You know, other than that, we around each other because we like each other. So I get to curate who I want to be around. They have to be like minded, you know, and my work got to be good. It don't matter. Like, you know, since when did the, the drug addict love the drug dealer? He just loves the drug. He'll stand in line for that drug. He hates the drug dealer. The drug dealer talks to him any way he wants. You know, get online. No, no, no singles. You know what I'm saying? But I'll be online as long as that work is good. As long as I'm getting high, I'm good. You know, so all the other don't matter. I'm not in the world of Chatty Patty. Chatty Patty's a that ain't got shit that are talking about other people's stuff to overcompensate. So I'm not around people like that. I'm only around innovative people that want to win. You know what I'm saying? So my circle is different. So instead of sitting around talking to people that are insecure, you know, I'm talking to the OSG. That's 90 black principles. I'm talking to senators like Senator Eddie Milton and Congressman R.J. Carton and, and bishops like Bishop Pinnell and doctors like Dr. Chris. I'm talking to therapists like, you know, Taj from the West Coast and Melody on the East. You know what I'm saying? So I've leveled up the people I have around me. You know, people aren't offended by what I say when they're not feeling insecure about what I say. You know what I'm saying? So people usually get mad when they know it's them. When that shoe fit, they don't want to wear it. Mm. I was just about to say, how do you decide what type of content goes on the platform? Like, like, like can somebody submit a concept, or is it all? It's got to be in house. Nah, you could. I mean, you could submit a concept if you make it. Like, you know, we'll figure it out. But usually, I gotta make it. So, you know, if you know me, or I notice that you're good and your skills are up to par like that, then we're gonna do something. Or if I'm inspired, <clears throat> it's really more about me being inspired. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't do nothing for money. I do shit that makes me feel good. You know what I mean? Like, I won't never, like, get paid to do something I wouldn't do for free. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, this ain't my job, Dang Dad Studios. This is my dream. But I worked on it so hard that it became my job. But it doesn't feel like work because it's my dream. Yeah, yeah. So what's your recommendation to the other dreamers out there, like the other independent people that have a hard time cutting through and don't have the same luxuries that you might have you know, from start the Dang Dad Studios? How do they stay independent, stay true to what they believe in and try to live in your way? You got to dream big and you got to flip. So if you make, you invest five, make 10, invest the whole 10. And if you fuck it up, start from scratch and do it again. You know, but it's about dreaming big and being and being patient. You got to flip. It don't happen overnight. You know, same thing with drug dealing. How you get in the game? Eight ounces turned into 16, 16 turned into 28. Eight turn, that turned into an eighth, eighth turned into a key, and then it was birds galore flying around everywhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I checked out the app, man. The OG stories, a yeah. hard, bro. Thank you. That shit was tough. I got, I got five. Heavy, I'm editing six episodes right now. So I got Loon's OG story. I got Dean Y's OG story. Miss Harlem. Uh, Michelle's OG story. I got a couple of fly ones. I got Oskino's OG, OG story. It is butter. Which one of those OG stories you still trying to get in the can that you really want to tell? 
I don't know. You know, I know a lot of I know a lot of like people that have been in the game. So, you know, it's like it depends, man. You know, a lot of my friends are coming home. So usually, you know, we have therapy and then we make money up or at least try to have people learn from the experience. You know what I'm saying? Reality show, and I mean a reality show, not a cornball reality show, but like an entrepreneurial reality show. Yeah, basically, I did an entrepreneurial television network, but all the shows, like I'm gonna do one that's like focused a little bit more on just me and Raquel's life, just because I'm not on the other one no more, and they be lying. So you know, I'm gonna do mine and tell the real story. But basically, you know, my whole life is really documented. I just don't monetize it as much as most, you know. But I, you know, I, I do it. It's funny because if my whole family stuck together, it would be real ill. <laughs> yeah. Like, are, you, are you familiar with the prophet? I'm familiar with prophet. <laughs> but I think I think uh, uh, prophet is money. But you know, prophet. But I uh, I think I heard of it. <laughs> now nah, we broke up with Kenny. Oh, I said I'm familiar <laughs> with prophet. Not nah, good. Nah, you, bro, it's a concept you'll be perfect for, bro. Where he goes and fixes businesses and exchange for peace and all that. Oh, uh, yeah, There's yeah. There's a sports version with A-Rod. Oh, yeah, yeah, they caught bro, me for that. There's a sports version with A-Rod. They caught you me mean, for that. That, that need to be you, bro. Yo, they bro, caught me for that. Man, they man, caught man, me for that. Man. But then when I was telling them what I was doing, they was like, they never called me back. They caught me for that. And I was like, y'all want to invest in something, I, invest in this television network. You know, but that's going to take some real so cake. You know, right? You got, um, so oh, we got to do it and put it all your network. Yeah, let's do it. We're gonna throw the idea to you. We gonna help you with it. Well, you know, if you write it out, produce. I got the cameras and all that other. Shit. Just don't make me do too much work. If you got it like that, if it's produced and all that other, I got the cameras and I got the platform. You know, hey, um, you can hold a uh, line for me real quick. You know, I'm down for it. Yeah. We, remember, remember, I did you the ultimate hustler. For BET, I did the Ultimate Hustler years ago. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Had good ratings, exactly. but that's I was making people too smart. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. But you know, again, it's funny because it was on BET, which is not owned by nobody black. And when it was smart television, no matter what the ratings are, they don't want it. If I'm teaching, the, if I'm teaching us the culture, they not they not picking it back up for that second season. If it's not dysfunctional and stupid, they don't even care about the ratings. <laughs> Shit is hilarious. But that's the game when, when they own it, we don't. Well, I don't really call too many people about a pitch or a business, but like I said, I talk to the OSG. That's 90 principles every Thursday and Tuesday. You know, when I have questions about vaccines, I call Dr. Pinnell. When I got questions about therapy or the way to deal with certain people, if they're going through a tough time or I'm going through a tough time, I call Taj and Melody. If I have a question about religion, like I'm like, yo, why do we call Jesus, Jesus? And that's a European interpretation of the name. And his name is Joshua. So I call the bishop and he breaks down down scripture by scripture to why, you know, black people think white people are, black, are, are God and that black people are number two, or at least people that aren't as intelligent. Yeah. Does it make you nervous when you see platforms like this where they come big and, and, and they, they fall out of nowhere? Nah, that was a big fund where they raised a bunch of bread, a bunch of kids got paid and they went out of business. I don't do that. It's a different game. And I'm not going to put out that. I'm not going to put out that you can get on and, and, and YouTube and charge people for it. That don't make no sense. But it makes sense when, because that game of raising money, whether the business goes, shut, dust go. Whether the business goes kaput or not, everyone still gets paid salaries and whatever money got exchanged, you get a little piece of that. So somebody made money, but they went out of business. Well, number one, I'm selling things, you know, and, you know, Netflix, they're, they're, they're doing all right. 
But in the beginning, they almost went out of business because they were licensing as opposed to making their own original content, which gives you no residual income. So I never wanted to rent somebody else's work and then give it back to them and not make money off it. For that same money, I make my own. And then I get residual income moving forward. I would do some type of profit split, but I'm not paying for it. That's fair. I get it. Um, now, switching gears a little bit, number one, congrats on the uh, engagement and congrats on the little one. I saw you having the fresh Air Forces already, too. You spun them off early. I respect it. And he got his, um, and he got his own clothing line, Baby Dusko. Word. So, right, let me see where he at. He over here somewhere running around. Hold on. He, already, he might be. He, already, he, he ain't gonna never know life or world. Without having a business, without having a business of his own. So he already started to stand for what he needs to be in the bed and sleep. What's that happen? Oh, here's, here's Rocky. Here's Ray Ray. Oh, you got it. Yeah, we just got engaged. We just got engaged. Nice. And let me show you. Thank you. Let me find baby. That's cool. Oh, yeah. She's launching her cooking show, a second season. In a couple of weeks. And, third season, don't play me. Oh, my bad. Third season. The third season. She watching her third season um, in a couple of weeks. So she'll be going as for that. She did, a, she did two books. She worked on a, a kid's book and a syllabus. Oh, here you go. From zero to, from uh, the womb to the third grade. Hey, go ahead. Here you go. Put a little fly guy. Here you go. You see? She got the socks on, the DD socks. Oh yeah, look, I mean, look, here it is. You see, you got a little DD, it's onesies. So, you can buy those at gangdashstudios.com. Hell yeah. Am I? You know, I'm with the moms. I've always been a visiting dad, and I, I, I never really got to cut that cycle that, you know, I had to go through for my kids. And my job is to make sure my kids don't have to go through the same pain that I went through. But the pain of my parents breaking up was the most painful thing for me as a young kid. And I haven't been able not to give my kids that very same experience. So this is the first one where I'm really breaking the cycle. You know what I'm saying? Well, here, look. Hey, Nicolette, that's, that's the site? Yeah, it's the site right here. Hey, go to the uh, shopping. So you know, you go. I don't know why I look like that. Okay. And then we go to, go to shopping. Uh, and then I can show you all the magazine and all that. The magazine, book, get shopping right there. You can't watch movies and go shopping. You know what I'm saying? Go to the magazine. Need to go to you go to magazine. Uh, go to, go to, oh, they got music. They got the music. So there's the magazines. That's one of the blue rock joints we have. You know. So you know we got we got. It's gonna go up. But it got you know does all that magazines, music experience, shopping experience, and you have the experience of uh, of content. Of movies, so this this the only app that does that. What's the size of the team that it takes to keep everything? Like how many people are you talking about? Um, you know, somebody else just asked me that question. I started counting it. It was good. One, two, three, four, five, about ten. But there's always a bunch of editors. Like I, it's always. You know, each business has other a whole lot of moving parts and people that do it. So if I do a movie for that for that week, I'm gonna have a hundred people. You know what I mean? If I do a uh, a record, you know, I got engineers and all that. So they all get hired at different times. But my consistent, pure staff is about ten. Yeah, here's the magazine. Here's the magazine right here. It's the Blue Rock magazine we did years ago. You know, and then you can order it in the physical. So you can look at it digitally, you spoke through it, but then you can order it digitally. You know, you know like that. That's what we did with MERS years ago. So, you know, Culture Vultures is in there. You can read the book in there. You know, got, go to the music part, go to the music part. 
the music. So here's the music. Like it's an experience. So there's my rock, my, my rock album I did. You know, Nicolette, my, my, my catalog is in there. So we need more in the catalog. You know, but and then, and then not nah, and then uh yeah, I got, I got, which black rock at? You gotta put black rock out of you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when you first launch an app, you know, at first I was um, using um, Vimeo's white label, which a lot of people use, but I didn't have control of the data. They was treating me like shit. And it didn't do all the things I wanted. And I'm paying them. And they weren't good partners for me. So, or to me, they treated me, they didn't treat me with the respect I felt I didn't like it. And it's crazy because I feel like I put them on. You remember I put out on the rub or those side ends. Like you gotta think about the way movies are coming out now. I did that three, four years ago, where I would put it out in the theater and put it out on the streaming same day. You know? And you could also and, and I was the first person to put movies out through Vimeo. So I'll go to them and say, yo, make a white label for me so you could do a streaming service. And they have a whole business model. But they, you know, again. It didn't do all the things I wanted to do. And I had to build it myself. When you build something, there's maintenance with that. You know what I mean? So building an app, sometimes I wouldn't advise it, but sometimes you got to do it yourself. But do understand there's a lot of maintenance that comes with that shit. They don't just work. It's, it's, it's harder to build the app than it is to build a building. To be honest, bro, like I've made enough money where I don't really have to do anything, you know? Really, you know what I'm saying? Like if I wanted to live a regular millionaire life, I could just sit back and chill. But again, these are my dreams. So, you know, dreams don't get given to you and you don't get tired of your dreams until you get your dreams and then you have bigger dreams. So, you know, I've never held no bread. I'm not about that. I'm about putting it into my dreams and living and, until I can put up enough that I can look at it. But I ain't never made enough to just look at it, you know, because I spend that. I like things, you know what I mean? But again, I can live a comfortable life, but I want to live, you know, I want to make history. And that's what makes me feel good. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.